Good morning, Cornerstone family and friends. It's great to have you today. You know, this past week I had the chance to go over and see my daughter uh, over in Alberta uh, for her birthday. It was a great time. But one of the things I just really was amazed during the passage through the mountains is how still the water was in different areas. And you could see this tremendous reflection of the mountains off the water and uh, being mirrored in just a beautiful, tranquil, quiet lake. It, it, the reflection was amazing. It kind of reminded me of um, the fact that a lot of times in our life, we have to take time to reflect on things and uh, the significance, the importance of things. Uh, a few years ago, a lady had been pulled over by a police officer and as a officer came to the window and asked for her uh, driver's license and her registration, she was in a tizzy and was really panicked and realized that she didn't have her license with her. So she fumbled around and she grabbed her cosmetic mirror from her purse and flipped it open and she looked at herself in the mirror and she, she said, see officer, it is me, and handed the mirror to the officer. And the officer looked at the woman and looked at the mirror, looked at the woman and he said, wow, I didn't know you were a cop. <laughs> You know, reflection is one of those things that's um, it's an in-depth perspective of who we are, a chance to examine what's happening in life and taking time to um, notice if there's things that need to be shifted and changed. In Ecclesiastes chapter 1, 3 to 11, it says, For what does a man get for all his hard work? Generations come and go, but it makes no difference. The sun rises and sets and hurries around to rise again. The wind blows south and north, here and there, twisting back and forth, getting nowhere. The rivers run into the sea, but the sea is never full, and the water returns again to the rivers and flows again to the sea. Everything is unutterably weary and tiresome. No matter how much we see, we are never satisfied. No matter how much we hear, we're never content. History merely repeats itself. Nothing is truly new. It has all been done or said before. What can you point to that is new? How do you know it didn't exist long ages ago? We don't remember what happened in those former times. In the future generations, no one will remember what we've done back here. You know, and it's kind of an interesting dynamic to kind of look through the process of history and what's happened in life. And even right now, people are taking a look at what's happening in our um, uh, politics and they're kind of saying, well, what's happened in the past? Who's been effective? And, and they're reflecting all that's happening. You know, reflection, when you go to a, a pond or a lake, as I mentioned, you know, you can look into it and you can see your face. And yet, if someone throws a rock, the image can be disturbed and you don't get to see that reflection clearly. If you've ever been to the house of mirrors and the fun house, you can see that there's all kinds of shapes of mirrors and they can distort you and what you look like and, and how that appearance is altered by a bend in, in the mirror, the glass reflection. You know, a hot shower steams the mirror. Suddenly you can't see anything. Glass can distort images. You know, if you've been into an older home, sometimes you can see that the glass is actually has moved and the distortion takes place in, in the visual uh, ability to see through that glass clearly. Something gets caught between the sun and the moon. The light cannot be reflected. And likewise, if something gets between us and God, we can't reflect his glory. Someone had mentioned, to be a light in this world, you must first be lit up by Jesus. A flashlight doesn't work without batteries. It's just a reminder that we need to be demonstrating a reflection of the God that we love and serve. Pablo Picasso said, the meaning of life is to find your gift. And the purpose of life is to give it away. Winston Churchill commented, it's not enough to have lived. We should be determined to live for something. John F. Kennedy stated, efforts and courage are not enough without purpose and direction. And Helen Keller stated, true happiness is not attained through self-gratification, but through fidelity to a worthy purpose. You know, it's important that we reflect on how we're using our time and what kind of activities that we're involved in. And are they advancing not only ourselves but the people around us? Are we making an impact that's positive? So the challenge is, what image do we reflect? Am I a reflection of Christ and what matters to him? Uh, a church in Washington, um, Vancouver, Washington, uh, called Living Hope Church came up with 15 statements of what mattered to Jesus. The example he set 
and the standard that he calls us to. What really matters to God will always matter to us. So their statements are this. We live faithfully. We will live faithfully. We will relate to everyone lovingly. We will rest appropriately. We will serve others selflessly. We will follow Jesus freely. We will read and meditate on God's word daily. We will pray and believe audaciously. We will protect our families fiercely. We will assemble with God's people weekly. We will give sacrificially. We will learn from others humbly. We will defend church unity ruthlessly. We will share Jesus passionately. We will thank God continuously. And their last one was, we will never forget we were born for destiny. So they took that time to just kind of see what was really important in Jesus' life. And they said, if that was important to him, we should try to convey that and live to that best ability in ourselves. Now, that's a model for us to follow, of course. And, you know, it does take time, discipline, and growth in order to accomplish a lot of those things. But the ideals, the, the purpose for why we live the way we do and how we live should be really to reflect the one that we love, and that is Christ Jesus. There's a lot of power of reflection. Um, you know, the, the idea of being changed into Christ's image implies a real gradual transfiguration, really. Our change into glory comes from the Lord, where he extends his grace upon our soul and helps to increase our faith. Uh, the light of his, um, of his spirit, the truth of who he is, is made known to us. And through our uh, knowledge and uh, application of the word in our life and through our experience, we begin to reflect who Jesus is in our own lives. 1 John 3, 2 says, Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You know, Colossians 1, 9-10 states, And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. And so um, a, a church came together with this thought, Inspiration Church, and um, they, they, drew a, they drew a diagram to kind of understand this. So in the middle is a circle, and that circle is the Holy Spirit. And then it's got these kind of uh, spokes that go out to different points. So the first one, what the Holy Spirit does is he helps to give us his word. He gives God's word to us. And through that, we gain the knowledge of God's will. Another spoke indicates that the Holy Spirit supplies our growth process. And, and what he does is he gives us all spiritual wisdom. As we apply ourselves to knowing God's word and, and acting it out and applying it, we find that there's wisdom that helps us to live day to day. Uh, the Bible is full of examples of how we conduct ourselves with one another, how we treat our children, how we treat our spouse. Um, how we do business. There's so many different components of the Bible that really gives wisdom in our affairs, how to deal with uh, hostility that you're faced with, how to uh, bring humility in situations. The Holy Spirit also enables. Uh, he gives all spiritual understanding. So not only are we reading, but we're actually uh, gaining insight of how to apply the word to our lives. And we understand how God wants to give us wisdom and helps to uh, accomplish the things that we face from day to day. The Holy Spirit also positions us to walk right and he basically teaches us how to walk with the Lord. Uh, one of the things the Holy Spirit wants to do is show truth and reveal truth. He wants to show the passion of God and he also wants to show the direction that God wants to lead us in. Uh, but walking with the Lord is a day-to-day -day experience that the Holy Spirit wants to be involved in. The Holy Spirit is also creative. He is actually living in us. Uh, he is teaching us. He's also um, helping us to bear fruit that demonstrates that we are serving God and we live for God. And finally, he is also creating a spiritual hunger for knowing more of the word. And so when we get uh, in the presence of, of God in prayer and uh, reading the word, we begin to gain our insight of the knowledge of God, his love, his compassion, his justice, his mercy, you know, all these things of who God truly is. Uh, the Word of God opens up a, a bit of a sliver to understand who God is. And the, the number one thing is that God loves us. God cares about it. God, God cares about the things we're involved in. 
God wants us to follow him and impact other people's lives around them with the knowledge that God has a great love for all mankind. You know, when it comes to spiritual growth, reflection is vital for us. We need to take inventory of where we're at. Are we growing? Are we developing? Uh, when we kind of evaluate our spiritual growth, some of the things we need to see, are we gaining understanding by spending time in his word? Um, are we getting together with, together with other people in Bible studies and, and, um, or even just over a, a coffee and saying, you know, I'm going through this passage and I'm really trying to figure out how this works and how this applies to my life. And, and, and you're growing in your understanding by, by applying yourself to understanding what the word of God is. Uh, the Holy Spirit in his process of working and helping us in our spiritual growth also will notice that we have a decreased frequency and severity of sin in our life because we're we're wanting to live to please God. We're wanting to do what would honor Him. And so we find that things that would maybe take away from us and, and or also maybe even lead us into areas of sin, we find there's a decreased frequency to do such things. There's an increase in Christ-likeness, those qualities that we kind of uh, indicated from Inspiration Church, you know, the things that were really dear to the heart of Jesus, we d we discovered that we're kind of demonstrating those qualities. And we're also taking on um, uh, some of the traits that we see in Jesus, you know, his compassion, his kindness, uh, wanting to heal people, wanting to show people the kingdom of heaven, uh, directing people to the heart of God. We find that as we're growing in the spirit, of course, we walk in the spirit and there's less flesh which means that there's going to be more fruit produced in our Christian walk. And really, the thing that we really discover when it comes to spiritual growth is there's a desire, um, a nourishment, a, a practice of living your faith uh, in a way that people can see that you're dedicated to what you really believe and what you really understand from what the scriptures uh, show us. So we're reminded this morning in 2 Peter chapter 1, 5-9, so don't lose a minute in building on what you've been given, complementing your basic faith with good character, spiritual understanding, alert discipline, passionate patience, reverent wonder, warm friendliness, and generous love, each dimension fitting into and developing the others. With these qualities active and growing in your lives, no grass will grow under your feet. No day will pass without its reward as you mature in your experience of our Lord and Master Jesus. Without these qualities, you can't see what's right before you, oblivious that your old sinful life has been wiped off the books. You know, when you kind of take a look at what Peter's saying, there's, you know, when you're really growing your faith and uh, the reflection of seeing that there's really growth happening, spiritual and practical life, you're going to see that your character, your character is going to demonstrate goodness. Your character is going to show qualities that are evident in in being a Christian. You're going to be showing the, the evidence of the fruit of God's Spirit. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, temperance, meekness. You know, you're going to be developing those things. You're going to be discovering that as you grow in God, there's more and more of a spiritual understanding to how you live your life and why it's important to live a life of discipline to follow God and uh, to, to really demonstrate that. Uh, that discipline is one of those things that helps you when there's potential danger to your faith or potential um, ruin by choice of being involved in things that could be devastating to your walk with God. And really having that, that component of um, a warm friendliness and generous love towards others. You know, that people matter, that you want to share with them, not because you're forced to, but because out of your experiential uh, place in your life of meeting with God personally and discovering he wants to be a part of your life and he wants to forgive you of your sins. That part of you just wants to share with people, you know, God loves you too, just as much. Uh, it, we're not better. We're not worse. We are people loved by God. And there's something about being able to come into a person's life without demand and judgment and, and point them to the fact that God cares and loves about people. So when you reflect on who you are in Christ, when you reflect on what you're demonstrating. You know, we're reminded that Jesus even talked about salt and light. And he said, if you're of the light, you don't want to be a person that's carrying around a, bark a bunch of darkness in your life. Uh, as salt, you want to bring flavor, positive flavor into people's lives. And so your, your life has to be a reflection that would demonstrate that you're truly walking after and following God. 
you know what's really important to realize is that day by day journey doesn't happen overnight. Your, your growth, your development, it's a process of walking with, understanding, uh, and getting encouraged with other believers, um, realizing that, you know, there are some people who haven't come to the knowledge of Jesus. And so they may still walk a little bit in darkness, not understanding really the, the requirement or the need for their life to come into uh, knowledge of who God is and how does that apply to them personally. And if they don't know, as Jesus says, he is the light of the world, if they don't know that, they don't understand what we're talking about when it comes to light. So the demonstration of that has to be from us who follow him and live for him and want to tell people about God's great love. So this morning, I just want to share some encouragement to you that in your journey to live as a Christian, please be aware that there is not a perfect Christian. And as much as we want to be perfect, it takes a lot of work just building step by step and growth. Be content in your, your walk with God in the sense of that he loves you and he's for you, but pursue God and become alert to what his word teaches and how does it apply to your life and, and grow in understanding and knowledge so that you can apply those things in your life. This next uh, few weeks, I'm going to be shifting into a, a new topic called, which I've called ARC. I'm going to be looking at Acts, Romans, and Corinthians. I'm going to take a look at how the early church kicked off and how the Holy Spirit came and what took place. I'm going to take a look at some of the uh, life that was lived during the time of the book of Acts. And then we're going to go into Romans where Paul teaches the importance of what it means to live this faith and how do I live this faith and and then we're going to go to Corinthians where we're going to take a look at the Corinthian church and see well how did they live with the things that came their way how did they deal with um, living in in a time where sometimes um, they didn't quite grasp or understand how do they live this life of a Christian walk and so Paul again kind of gives some instructions so the next little while I'm going to take a look at the uh, ark Acts Romans and Corinthians and give us a chance to kind of take a look at how did the early church start and how what is that a, what does that do for me today what's its implications and what does it really mean to walk in the spirit and live in the spirit so i hope you can join us for the next few weeks as we kind of dissect into those books and examine how does that apply to me and how do i grow from this and where am i going in my personal walk with god in the meantime i just encourage all of us myself included Take time to reflect. You know, someone has said the most, uh, the longest time people often do self-reflection is when they're in front of the mirror at the, at the hairdresser or the barber shop. Uh, but I really want to encourage you, sometimes we need to take time to do that personal inward self-reflection. Where am I? Where am I going? Where does God fit into this journey? How am I becoming more like Jesus? Let's pray. Lord, thank you today that you love us. You care about each of us. We pray that we may grow in your grace and your mercy. Thank you, God, that you love us so much that you look beyond our, our, our faults, our failures, and you pick us up and you put us together and you help us to grow and become strong. I pray for every one of us today that we may walk in your ways and reflect you wherever we are. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Great having you today. Take care.